Give me water. Bring it up from the ground. Cool, clean water. There's enough to go around. Be cave driven. Give me water. Be cave driven. Give me water. Hi. I'm Jim Blair with Bee Cave Drilling. Are you thinking about building a small public supply water system? Well, we build a lot of them, and I want to show you what they look like, because it's very different from the residential wells you've probably seen before. There's a lot of rules we have to follow when we build these systems, and that does affect what they look like. So, let's go inside and take a look. Now, keep in mind, we can customize many of the things you see here on your site. This is our well head. This is our PVC casing right here and it goes all the way to the bottom of the well and it's cemented in place. And we also have this slab around it and it's sloped so that all the water will run away from it. Our submersible pump is down inside the well. It's hanging from this production pipe right here and when the well pump turns on it pumps water through this pipe and over to our storage tank. Now a lot of the things you see here are required by the state. Things like this vent and this water meter and this sampling valve. Let's go take a look at the TCEQ approved public supply storage tank. When the well pump turns on, it pumps water over to this storage tank. This is a 10,000 gallon TCEQ approved public supply storage tank. It's big. It's got a 12 foot diameter and the walls are 12 foot high. So with the domed roof and the vent on top of that, it's 14 and a half, maybe 15 feet tall. I'm sure it looks a little different from the residential storage tanks you've seen before. A lot of the things here are required by TCEQ. Things like this ladder and this cage around it. You've also got this big old manway over here that we can open up to get inside and work inside the tank. Also, if you look up on top, we've got a hinged lid that's lockable. Let's walk around the back side of this tank and take a look at some of the other features. The state requires that we have some sort of a gauge that shows the water level inside the storage tank. We like to use an altitude gauge. It's basically a pressure gauge that's really sensitive and it can tell you how many feet of water is above the gauge. What you do first is you close the drain valve, then you open up the pressure valve. You can see here, we've got about four and a half feet of water standing in this tank. When we're done, we like to close this valve and open the drain valve. By letting all the water out, it won't be damaged when it freezes. And on the back side of the storage tank, we've got a four inch overflow. And we've also got a two inch drain valve. If we have to work on the inside of this tank, we just open that up and drain all the water out. This cage sure keeps you safe when you're climbing this ladder. Here's another look at our hinged lid. It's lockable right here. This gives us access to our float switches that are inside. So this is our alarm. It goes off if the water level gets low in the storage tank. That way you're warned before you run out of water. We can also hook it up to your water pressure so that it'll go off and tell you if there's something going wrong there. Another option we have for you is a separate unit that will alert you by email or text. The state of Texas requires that we keep some chlorine in your water at all times. And the way that we do that is when the well pump turns on, we also turn on a small chemical feed pump. And that pumps a chlorine solution into the water as it's going into the storage tank. That way we've got plenty of time to kill any bacteria that might be present in the water. Now the state requires that that be inside of a building. The way we've done that for years is to put that tank and that pump inside the pump house. The problem with that is that tank is going to vent off some chlorine gas. And that gas is going to go attack anything metal that's around it. Things like your booster pumps, your pressure tanks, your electrical controls. Imagine if you have to replace all that equipment every three or four or five years. That is going to get expensive. So the way that we fix that problem is to use a small shed like this. It's all plastic, so there's nothing that that gas can go attack. We've got our tank right here and our pumps in here. And that is a no-brainer. When the water flows out of our storage tank, it comes in here into the pump house. This is where we keep all the equipment that builds the water pressure for your distribution system. We've got things like our booster pumps, our pressure tanks, and all of the electrical controls that makes this system run automatically. That way, when you turn on the faucet, you get good, clean, certified drinking water. Now, one of the things you may have noticed on this site is this fence, and it's actually required by the state of Texas. You can choose a fence that fits with your decor. However, there are certain standards that it must meet in order to satisfy the state of Texas. We will work with you and your engineer to design a fence that fits with your site. This video should give you some idea of the challenges that are involved in building a public water system in the state of Texas. Now there's a whole bunch of rules that we must follow depending upon your circumstances. 
things like what aquifers are available, how many people are going to be using the water, and what they're going to be using the water for. We will work with your engineer to design and build a water system that fits with your situation. Give us a call today. We'd love to talk to you about a public supply system. And thank you for letting us be your well man. Give me water. Bring it up from the ground. Cool, clean water. There's enough to go around. Be cave driven. Give me water. Be cave driven. Give me water. Call Bee Cave Drilling now for a free estimate. Give me water.